Doom 2 on Nightmare Difficulty is no joke. Um, actually, I think it literally was put in the game as a joke. Yeah, yeah. Shh. Logically, you would assume that high tier demons such as the Archfiles and Cyber Demons are the most troublesome entities during a nightmare run. But you would be surprised how much the tiering is affected by the demon's placement, quantity, its inhuman reaction speed, and respawning capabilities. This tier list takes into consideration the specific enemy encounters that player will have when playing Doom 2 on Nightmare, going for all or most of the secrets. Before we begin, let's discuss what this tier list does not take into consideration. Any heavily modified port of Doom such as GZ Doom. It messes with Doom's fundamentals too much and is not an accurate representation of vanilla Doom, even with the Doom's strict compatibility setting enabled. Playing Doom 2 on the BFG edition. For some reason, the BFG edition's nightmare difficulty lacks the fast monsters, so for example, it does not include turbo pinkies. Maps that are not in Doom 2, such as Ultimate Doom. Single segment runs with weapons coming over from previous levels. This list only considers starting each level with a pistol only. So, with that out of the way, let's go explore the bottom of the barrel first and start off with Tier F. Tier F. This is where we'll find the least threatening enemies during a Doom 2 Nightmare run. Let's review our first demon, drumroll please. Well, the thumbnail kinda gave it away, but it's still shocking. The mighty spider demon at the bottom? How is this possible? First of all, the spider mastermind simply doesn't appear in Doom 2 very often, only 5 times to be specific. Once each in map 6, map 20, map 23, and twice in map 28. Yo Peter, tell us a bit about each encounter. Alright, uh, map 06 has a place underneath a huge crusher which makes sense for a level named The Crusher. Once you flip that switch, she's a goner. Her job is to guard a plasma gun and also to make it harder for you to grab the blue key but she's usually too busy infighting with all the imps on the ledge to pay any attention to you. The infamous one in map 20 is completely optional. If revealed, she will fight with the cyberdemon to the death. Even if she survives, she's left with basically no health anyway. Map 23's spider mastermind will infight the arachnotrons and you can easily run past her. No problem at all. There's two of them in map 28. As there's invulnerabilities everywhere, you'd be stupid to get killed by them. So, she's rare and not threatening at all. Hence the bottom tier position. Who's next? The final boss of Doom 2 is a wall. Defeating this boss is pretty easy. Pump rockets into its brain with the correct timing and just hope no archfiles or pain elemental spawn. Another thing to mention about the Icon of Sin, if this tier list took single segment speedruns into consideration, this absolute run killer would definitely be in SS tier because killing this boss in a single cycle is actually very demanding. Let's move up a tier. Who's the first D-tier enemy to discuss? The Hell Knight is a bit of a glass cannon, high damage output and medium health. There actually aren't that many Hell Knight encounters in Doom 2 that are considered dangerous. Most Hell Knights in Doom 2 are placed sparsely and not in groups. Some encounters worth mentioning, Mappa 5 has a Hell Knight after the red key door which has to be made to infight with a chain gunner before you can get through safely. Nothing too dangerous, but it's an interesting encounter nonetheless. Map 17 has a section which puts you up against a Hell Knight in a tight area full of explosive barrels and spectres. All you have at this point is a berserk, a shotgun and some armor. Good luck trying to fight this Hell Knight alone when you've got all these spectres respawning erratically around you. Up another tier we go. Let's review the next demon. Kinda expected to have imps this low, but higher than Hell Knights? Aren't imps just smaller Hell Knights? What gives? As mentioned in the introduction, monster placement and quantity plays a huge role. Firstly, map 1 is a hassle because of your limited arsenal in dealing with all the imps. Maps 12 and 21 in particular have some very nasty imp encounters. No, not that one. Both maps have teleporters that when you go through them, you're surrounded by imps that can easily tear you to shreds. Overall, imps are found pretty much everywhere, so it's quite likely to end up dead because of at least one of them. Yeah, this is for real. Just like the Spider Mastermind, the Cyber Demon appears quite rarely in Doom 2. Let's go through each encounter. Everyone remembers the one from Tricks and Traps, Map 08. This run will infight the Barons. Although its fate is uncertain, sometimes he kills all of them and goes to sleep, or he gets killed by the Barons. Other times he will teleport to the hub area and ruin your run. Invulnerability won't always save you here due to the map's length. Map 10's Cyberdemon can be a bit of a pain if he teleports to the exit door, but thankfully this level has two invulnerability spheres, so if you haven't grabbed one of them and this happens, you're pretty much screwed. 
The Hans Gross replacement in map 32 is easy to deal with as well. Just run past him, or if you're not confident, just grab the invulnerability. As shown earlier, map 20 has a cyber demon, encountered through a completely optional path so it can be completely ignored and usually taken care of by the spider mastermind as well. And finally, the one in map 29 can't do anything if you just run straight to the exit. Arachnotrons in Doom 2 aren't very dangerous, there's one in map 17 at the yellow key that is quite annoying. The real problem occurs in map 7, dead simple. All Arachnotrons must be killed to exit the level. With respawning enemies that is very tricky. The trick is to damage them equally, then finish them off at the same time. They can be quite annoying in map 13 too, as they can block you a lot when trying to get around. Archfowl in tier C? How the mighty have fallen. They are kinda rare in Doom 2, and most of them can be skipped. Don't get too cocky though, they can still zap you with their devil magics. One archfowl in particular, the one from map 14, can be a real pain. It's surrounded by hit scanners, and while you're running across the water, you can only pray that the pissed off Martian doesn't target you. A bit of a side note, the archfowl can actually be very useful in map 27 for skipping basically the whole level if you're not going for 100% secrets. This exit door normally requires a red key, but the archfowl can open it for you if you bumped into it. Just hope that he doesn't misbehave and go through the teleporter. We'll always infight anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the super shotgun in Doom 2, or else these pinkies would have been upped a tier. Also be careful with the rocket launcher, pinkies love catching those from up close. Pinkies in vast numbers can be very deadly as they aim to completely swarm you, giving you nowhere to go while eating you alive. Dangerous swarms of pinkies can be found in map 08, guarding the FG, map 09, guarding the yellow key, map 23, guarding the rest of the level and a very important megasphere, and also map 24. This section is absolutely full of them. Alright, time to discuss some B tier demons. Now we're reaching the danger zone. Which mighty demon should we discuss first? <laughs> What? Oh yes, these things will slowly drain your health. Being a hit scanner, there's no real way to dodge their attacks. Sure, you can take it slow and hide behind corners, but those respawning demons disallow you to camp too much. Some honorable encounters? Attempting to grab the red key in map of 5 is pretty deadly. These guys will snipe you all at once, leaving you with barely any health a lot of the time. You just have to get lucky, really. Map 10 has a dark area which is full of them. These zombie men are the reason it's extremely dangerous to go for all secrets in this level. They're everywhere in map 15, sniping you from afar, from behind, and from above. Good grief. Would have been in the same tier as the Hell Knights if it weren't for those pesky barons that guard the teleport at the end of map 29. They will ruin your run in the blink of an eye. Due to this specific situation, they are raised to tier B. If only the level had a rocket launcher or BFG. The Mancubus's damage output is unreal. He's very good at blocking your path and can soak up a lot of damage. Dust off those dodging skills because you're gonna need them. Let's analyze why they are dangerous. Dead simple, map 07. I think this clip speaks for itself. They will start respawning too when the Rachnotrons join the party. When you're going for the VFG in map 09, they'll make you dodge a lot of fireballs. The main building in map 12 is full of them, and if going for all secrets, you get to meet them quite a few times, and they're not friendly. Spectres are even worse than pinkies, because you can barely even see them and they will do their absolute best to get in your way. Map 5 has a secret behind the exit where you need to run across a pit of spectres. If you get blocked by one of them and fall in the pit, it's basically death. In map 6 you can run straight to the exit if your movement is good, but be damn sure that the spectres will try to stop you from doing that. I'm gonna be honest, I don't actually know how many spectres there are in map 19's outskirts, because I can barely see them. But I get the impression that there are a lot of them and they all want me dead. Map 22 would definitely teach you to hate these things. This level has you constantly being blocked as you're desperately trying to find cover from all the respawning chain gunners and the oncoming homing revenant missiles. Welcome to the danger zone. The demons listed here and above will cause the majority of your deaths. Shotgunners appear throughout the entire campaign and let's just say their only purpose is to annihilate you with their powerful hitscan attack. These guys will be your number one cause of death. Let's check out some highlights, shall we? The second map alone is shotgun to hell. You cannot turn a corner without encountering at least one of these guys. They're everywhere. Map 04 is absolutely relentless, there to shoot you through the opening and closing windows at the start of the level, and again when backtracking to the red door. Map 12, behind this door, is a cruising spot for shotgunners, and they'll get very angry at you for interrupting their fun. 
The second area, map 21, has so many shotgunners I don't even want to take the time to count them. In fact, the less time spent in this god awful level, the better. Map 25 has them everywhere. The ones by the Megasphere in particular are extremely dangerous. These lanky boys, in general, are not affected by fast mounts that much. They do not run any faster, and their missiles still travel at normal speeds. But, they will fire missiles non-stop, and when half of them are homing, things will go very badly. This one can be very annoying in up 14, because the missiles go through the windows, making it harder to avoid, and you will revisit this area more than once. Even if you kill it, chances are high it will respawn and hunt you down. The main reason the Revenant is placed in A tier is because of map 22. While you're busy being gangbanged by the chain gunners and the spectres, they have the audacity to fire 80 damage nearly undodgeable missiles at your head. The Revenant guarding the teleport exit at the blue key manages to hit you nearly every time if you haven't already taken it out. The second Revenant that guards the red door is even worse. Hiding when you're trying to kill it all the while, all the chain gunners are shooting at you from every bloody direction and spectres shoving their ball fetish in your face when you're clearly not enjoying it. Do not let their cute looks deceive you. These tomatoes will block you with their giant size if you try to run past them and hurl lightning fast projectiles at you. Don't mess with one up close, as their bite can do up to 60 damage. Not only do they have quite a lot of health, they typically appear in groups. They can also be quite hard to hit with projectiles as they float away from you as you hit them. Here are the most dangerous groups of Kakodemons in Doom 2. The ending to Map 05 is quite deadly and has you avoiding Kakodemon projectiles before you can reach the exit. Map 11 has a dark section near the end where you get attacked by Kakodemons from every angle. It's very difficult to make it through here alive. The Kakodemon Room from Map 12. Oh boy. One of the hardest parts of Doom 2. You better be good at avoiding lightning fast projectiles from every direction to get through this bit. Map 18 has a group of Cacodemons accompanied by some spectres. They give you a real tough time grabbing the camouflage blue key that blends in with all the health bonuses. In Map 26's narrow corridor, they will block your path every single time. Two sections in Map 29 involve a lot of caco travel, the cells area and the slowly raising bridge section. They also like to follow you around the level, appearing in places they're not supposed to. Uh oh, now comes the worst of the worst, tier S, who will we find here? Good grief, they will just spam up the entire room with lost souls, that 21 lost soul limit will not save you. They will make whatever room you're in extremely chaotic and reduce mobility to nearly non-existent. Good thing these meatballs cannot respawn, or they would have been SS tier. And speaking of lost souls... They will just keep charging at you whenever they can, they will push you, damage you, and generally piss you off. Thankfully, they get stuck a lot when charging you. They will get blocked by decorations, corpses, ammo, etc. Oh, and uh, they do not respawn either, thank god. The ones in map 09, at the secret section with the elevators, they teleport around and will make your life a living heck. The worst ones are in map 24. Yeah, you know, the chasm, with those thin ledges. These obnoxious fiery heads will block you and push you off into the inescapable toxic pit. I feel sorry for anyone who falls off here in a single segment run. Now, time for the biggest bad guy of Doom 2 on Nightmare Difficulty. We all know who's going to be number one. There's one more humanoid left to discuss after all. Shoot level. The SS Nazi of course, what else? He is literally SS. Jokes aside, let's put him in tier D for not being very harmful. You can avoid most of their hitscan attacks by grabbing the partial invisibility in map 31. In map 32, you've got a megasphere and invulnerability to make them pretty much harmless. Now, for the real SS tier demon. <laughs> map 05 is filled with them. The one at the red door do a great job of killing you. Chain gunners in map 14 are put in the absolute most obnoxious places. Oh, and map 20 is fun too. As you approach the teleporter, say hello to some chain gunners. As you go through the teleporter, oh, some more chain gunners. And finally, map 22. Roll the clip. These chain gunners want nothing more than to make you cosplay as a piece of Swiss cheese. So, there you have it. 
The Doom 2 Nightmare Difficulty Monster tier list. What do you think of this list? Got anything more to add? Share your thoughts and experiences in the comment section below. To see this tier list in action, check out Peter's Doom 2 100% Nightmare run. It will truly put the tier list into perspective. Alright, so in the next video we'll discuss Ultimate Doom's Nightmare Difficulty Monster tier list. After that we're gonna take a time machine and check out the monster tiers from Doom 2016's Ultra Nightmare. Exciting stuff awaits, so stay tuned!